Today is going to be a fun one. We're going to add Wi-Fi connectivity to our Prusa Mini. Hello everyone, Chris here, and the Prusa Mini has been a pretty stable little 3D printer for me over the last couple of years, and Prusa has been turning out different firmware releases that add more and more features. Out of the box, the Mini does have a 32-bit board that Prusa calls the Buddy Board, and an Ethernet port, so you can add network connectivity. But the Buddy Board also has a header where you can add a Wi-Fi module, so you can have wireless connectivity. We've been just waiting for that firmware version to come out so that we can enable that feature. It has been in beta for quite a while. You could go to GitHub, try to compile it, and put it on your printer and test it out. But now, here in late November 2022, it is in the stable release. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to get the firmware updated, we're going to install a Wi-Fi module, and we're going to add that wireless connectivity. This is a very easy and affordable mod to do. If you have a Mini, you're definitely going to want to try it out. So, let's see what the module looks like that we're going to add, and all the steps it takes to get this done. Here's a look at the Wi-Fi module we're going to use today. It's an ESP8266. They call it an ESP01. There's a 01 and a 01S. This one is a 1 meg module. They also make a 4 now, I believe. There might be others out there. There's a list on the Prusa site which ones are compatible. This is a pretty old one, but it's going to work just fine for today's install. And here's our Prusa Mini. We'll go ahead and power down and unplug it. And then we have to remove the cover so we can install our Wi-Fi module. Here on the back of the machine, we just have one screw. It's right here. It's kind of hard to see in this view. But just take that one off. That'll loosen this block that holds the wires. And we can take the cover off. And the cover will just slide out of the way. And in the Prusa Mini case, it's a little busy. There's a lot of wires going on here. The module plug that we actually need is down in here. So it's easiest just to remove this power switch so we can get to it. We're going to go ahead and pull these wire connectors off. It doesn't matter which is which, it's just a switch connection. So we'll just pull those. Be careful, this is a printed part. You don't want to break it. And then you should be able to squeeze the two tabs on the sides of the switch and push it out the side. If you can't quite get it, needle nose pliers are going to help. Once you've got both those tabs pushed in, you can just slide it out. And that will give us room to install our Wi-Fi module. Now with these ESP01 modules, it's pretty self-explanatory. They're only going to go one direction. So you just slide it into that header. There's eight pins. And it just slides down in there like that. And then we can go ahead and put our power switch right back on. It just snaps in. Hook up both your connectors. And then we're ready to go ahead and seal up our case once again. The module's in, it's very easy to install. We are going to need our USB flash drive so we can update the firmware to the newest version. So we're going to go ahead and get our latest firmware that we need, but if you were to get stuck during this process, Prusa has a great guide out here, step by step. It's a fairly easy process, so you shouldn't have any problems, but it's here if you need it. So we're going to head to Prusa3D.com, and we'll go to Help, Drivers and Firmware, and we'll scroll down to the Mini. Whether you have the Mini Plus or the original Mini, firmware should be the same. But as of right now, with the Wi-Fi support, we're on version 4.4.0. So we're going to grab this one. When the download's complete, we'll head to Downloads and we'll just extract all. It is a zip file. We'll head in to the firmware folder, and you need both of these BBF files. We'll just highlight those and copy them. And I mounted the USB drive from the Mini on the computer. And I'm just going to remove any BBF files that are already on here, or zip files, anything that I've put on here previously, just to make sure we use the right one. You can leave your G-code files, they're fine. And we'll just paste in those BBF files. There they are. Now we can take our USB drive back to the printer. We'll mount our drive with our new files on it. And then we'll plug it back in, go ahead and power up. When it starts to boot, it's going to ask you if you want to go ahead and update to that newest version. We do. So we're going to select Flash. And it's going to go through the flashing process. It takes just a little bit. We're also updating the bootloader with this Flash. You don't do that on every one, but this one we will. Remember, don't remove your drive or power this thing off while it's in this process. That could cause some huge problems that you can't recover from. If you're trying to use another flash drive while doing this, just a side tip, make sure that it's formatted FAT32 
and it can't be larger than 32 gig or it's not going to read it. You will go through several restarts and different flashes to get all of this done because of that bootloader. So just let it do its thing. After 10 minutes or so, the install will be complete and you're going to be greeted with this Wi-Fi module wizard. Now this QR code, if you hit it with your phone, it's going to take you to the instructions on Prusa on how to do this, but I'm going to walk you through that now. So we'll go ahead and hit continue. It's now going to go ahead and update the firmware on that 8266. So we'll hit continue again. And there's three steps that it's going to go through. That took about two minutes to complete. We have successfully flashed that 8266. We can hit continue. And then we want to generate Wi-Fi credentials. So go ahead and hit continue. And what this does is write a credentials file onto our USB drive that we can take to our computer and edit so that it can connect to our existing Wi-Fi network here at the house. So before we hit continue, we're going to take out our drive. We'll go back to the computer. With our drive mounted once again, we'll head to it. And you should have a Prusa printer setting init file. I'm just going to right click. I'm going to edit that with Notepad++. I prefer using Notepad++ because I know it's going to keep the syntax and everything correct as intended. WordPad or just regular notepad might not. So I would go with this if I were you. But now we just need to update our Wi-Fi information. And you don't need quotes or anything around your info. You just need your wireless network name. Remember they are case sensitive. Mine is BC Wireless. Most every Wi-Fi network you're going to run into nowadays is going to be WPA. That's the kind of encryption, so just leave that alone and then your Wi-Fi password. Remember, this is also case sensitive. So just punch it in, whatever it might be. And then hit save. Now we can take our USB drive back to our printer. You can see the screen is telling us to make sure you have your USB drive loaded. So we'll go ahead and load that now that it has our config file updated on it. And we can go ahead and hit continue. It's uploading that config so that it can join your Wi-Fi network. It has succeeded. Now these Wi-Fi modules aren't the quickest thing in the world, so it might take a couple of minutes, but it has already made a successful connection. Now our Prusa Mini is on the Wi-Fi. We'll hit continue. You can see up here, our Wi-Fi is connected and working. And just a side tip, if you miss the wizard or it didn't prompt you correctly, you can always go back and reconfigure that. Just from home, head to settings. down to network here you're gonna have all of your info we will need that IP to connect and if you head to Wi-Fi you can rerun that wizard from here just go to set up Wi-Fi module and back to network you'll notice you have Prusa link and just your Wi-Fi information you don't necessarily have to use it with Prusa link if you don't want to but I will show you how to set that up but you do need the API key. So go into Prusa Link, and that's the current key that you have. So you're gonna need that when we take it back to Prusa Slicer. I usually just snap a picture of that with my cell phone in case I need it later. Now the way that I like to use all my Prusa printers as well as the Mini now that it has direct Wi-Fi is just to allow it to upload the G code directly and let it start the prints right in Prusa Slicer. So to set that up, use your Mini profile and then head to printer settings. And if you hit the cog up here, it's going to be in physical printer settings. So I'm just going to create a new one. It's based on the Prusa Mini profile, but let's just call this Prusa Mini Wi-Fi. And we can just leave this Prusa link so you can use either or, but put in your IP. We saw that on the screen back in the Wi-Fi settings. Ours was 192.168.1.20. And then enter that API key. They are case sensitive and they're kind of long winded, but that's why it's handy to have that cell phone pick. And then when you have your key in, just go ahead and hit test to make sure it can connect. Connection is working successfully. We can hit okay. And then back to the platter. Now that you have that set up and that physical printer is selected or Prusa mini Wi-Fi, you can grab your Benchy or whatever 3d print you might want to use. Just hit slice, 
And then down here, you can send to printer. And we'll just hit upload and print. Those Wi-Fi modules are just a little bit slow, depending on how far it is away from your router. But it's still better than not having it at all. Once your file's made it over, you can see it's updated on the screen. It's going to heat up, and it's going to run that G-code. By adding this module, it has made it really handy to integrate with Prusa Slicer without needing something like Octoprint. And we do have another option here. We can use Prusa Link and Prusa Connect to connect up to our printer. This can be handy for remote support. But in-house here on the local network, you can just head to the IP of your printer, 192.168.1.20. And here it's going to ask you for that same API key that we used. Again, why it's handy to have it on your cell phone. Or you can get real creative, head back to Prusa Slicer, edit that physical printer, copy that API key, and then head back to Prusa Link, and paste it in. And we'll log in. Now we have our built-in interface that we can use to control our Prusa Mini. If you hit storage, it'll show you everything that's on that USB drive. And from here, no matter what slicer you're using, if you have your G-code sliced for your Mini, you can just drag it here and do the same thing we did with the slicer. You can either start it after it transfers automatically or start it yourself. But if we just take that same G-code, I'll just export it and we'll just drag it over from our desktop. They can't be the same name, by the way. If you have one of these on your USB drive already like we do, you'll have to rename it to get it to upload. But once that's done, you'll have it over here in your storage on your USB drive. And then you can start it right from here. Just select your file, it'll show you the preview, and hit Start Print. It'll take you back to the dashboard and give you status on what you're printing, your temperatures, all that kind of good stuff. Now, the only downside to the Wi-Fi module on the Prusa Mini right now is they don't have Prusa Connect integration yet, so that you can do this remotely. Now, you could monitor these remotely if you did something like port forwarding or you had a VPN. I don't recommend doing that. Just wait for them to get Prusa Connect up and running. But if you're familiar with Prusa Link, you can see in Prusa Connect, I have a couple of Mark III printers. They don't have that integration with the Mini yet, but if you hit Add New Printer, you can see it's only the Mark III's and the 2.5's. But when they get that integration, you can do that straight from Prusa Link, the local address on your printer. You'll just have to have your Prusa serial number and your API key to be able to connect up to that Prusa Connect. Hopefully we'll see that integration very soon. But for now, just having the Wi-Fi integration from Prusa Slicer and here with Prusa Link is really handy. I'm really enjoying using it. And just a little bit of side information, if you've never used Prusa Link, it actually formats on your cell phone screen rather well. So it's handy to have it on your phone here. You can monitor it throughout the house, waiting on your print to finish. So the install is very straightforward and the firmware update is very easy to do. And that ESP module they have you use is very affordable. They're just a couple of dollars. You can get them over on Amazon or pretty much anywhere. That module has been out for a long time. Now the performance on those modules isn't that great. It's gonna take a while to upload large G-code files to your mini, but that's kind of a known issue with this type of ESP module. Given the fact that Raspberry Pis are hard to get and you don't have the option to set up Octoprint always, this might be a fine option for a lot of folks. You're just going to have to wait a little bit longer. Also, they don't have Prusa Connect yet, but I'm sure that feature is going to be available very soon. Then you will have remote support through the Prusa ecosystem where you can check on it no matter where you go. And that will just make things even better. So given the price point of one of these modules and how easy it is to install, I don't see why you wouldn't give it a try. Now this is a shorter video, so what do you say, let's go ahead and go to a time lapse just to make sure our mini is working as well as it ever did.
So just to test everything out to make sure it's working, I printed out one of these articulated dragons that all the cool kids are doing nowadays. This one is by user Sunset over on printables.com. I've never printed one of these before, but I have to say, it is very satisfying. So there you go. Our Prusa Mini Wi-Fi upgrade is now complete. I said it before, but this is a really easy upgrade to do. It adds value to your Prusa Mini, and it's very affordable. So I don't see why you shouldn't give it a try if you have your own Prusa Mini. Hopefully you found this helpful. That is it for today, and I'll see you really soon on the next one.